Namaste, welcome yogis. If you are new to my channel, my name is Cassandra and today we're doing a Vin to Yin yoga class, something that is always highly requested and you guys are always asking for more of these. So I hope you enjoy this one. If you've never done Vin to Yin, it just means that pretty much the first half of the class is a vinyasa style practice, so a pretty strong flow. And then the second half of the practice is Yin yoga, where we hold passive poses for an extended period of time. So like two to three minutes, on each side. Um, with yin yoga, you definitely want to have some props close by, so uh, two blocks should be good for you today. And a little disclaimer, normally it's uh, advocated that yin yoga be done before vinyasa flow, but truthfully, I prefer it the other way. So the only thing you need to be mindful of when you start with vin vinyasa and you end with yin yoga is that when we get to the yin yoga part, your muscles are already going to be warm which means that the yin yoga poses are mainly going to be working on your muscles as opposed to the joints and the connective tissues, which is usually what we're trying to do with yin yoga. And all you need to be mindful of is that when your muscles are warm, it's easy to go a little bit past your edge and you risk kind of hurting yourself. So when we're at the yin yoga practice, I'm really going to ask you to kind of hold off a little bit and pull back and maybe don't go quite as deep as you normally would or as you think you can. Um, that's also kind of the risk with like hot yoga, which I love hot yoga. I do it. I teach it. I'm a big fan of it, but that's the same kind of risk with hot yoga is that your muscles feel really warm and you're like, oh my God, I'm so flexible. I can do all these things. And then the next day you get up and you're like, I should not have <laughs> done all of those things. So that's kind of what can happen in Vinti Yin. You just need to be extra mindful in the yin yoga portion, not to overstretch or overstress your joints, really kind of stay mindful of your limits um, and no need to like push or pull or anything like that. Okay, that's enough disclaimers. I think we're gonna start for the vinyasa practice, lying all the way down on our backs with knees bent, feet flat on the mat. And you can widen your feet a little bit, just let your knees fall in towards one another. Bring your palms to rest on your belly, just to connect here. Notice how you feel today, what's going on physically or mentally, maybe even energetically. So the first part of our practice will be fairly intense, working on core strength, on twists, on hamstring flexibility. So check in with those areas of your body just to see if there'll be anything you need to be mindful of. And remember, you can always take some breaks. There's no need to rush through anything. Focus in on your breath moving in and out through your nose. And you can bring your feet a little bit closer towards each other, getting into our core right away. So I want you to feel your low back pushing down into the mat beneath you. And then you're going to bring your knees up. So stacking your knees over your hips with your shins parallel to the floor. So really push your lower back down so there's no gap there. And if that made your knees shift forward towards your belly, realign them without losing that, um, without creating space underneath your low back. So really keep your lower back right there. You can straighten your arms and press your palms down into the floor. Really subtle movements, press your shoulders down into the mat. As you inhale, you're gonna hold as you are. And on the exhale, all you're gonna do is keep your knee bent at a 90 degree angle. Just let your right toes tap the floor. Inhale, pull it back up. And then exhale, left toes tap. Inhaling to lift, and we'll just alternate a few times. So keep going with the rhythm of your own breath. And the most important thing is that the only thing that's hinging is your hip joint. My knees aren't moving at all, my ankles aren't moving at all. I'm just dipping down through the hips to tap the toes, always trying to push the low back down into the floor and drawing your low belly in and up. So we'll take about two more on each side. You should start to feel your lower belly and your core start to engage and turn on. 
Last one, one per side, tapping the right toes down, tapping the left toes down, and release. This time, let's straighten our legs all the way up to the sky. Keep your arms exactly as they are. Inhale, you can hold and stay. And on the exhale, you're just going to lower your right leg to hover a few inches off the mat. Inhale, come back up, maybe curl tailbone up. And then exhale, left leg hovers. Inhale, lift it up, curl up. Exhale, right leg down. A few more, go at your own pace. Exhale to lower, always. Inhale, always to rise. Take two more on each side. Pointing through the toes. Last cycle, right leg lowers to hover. And left leg lowers to hover. Squeeze up. And now hold on, you can let your left foot come back down to the mat. Hold on to the back of your right hamstrings. If you'd like to go further, you can straight, stretch and straighten your left leg to the floor. So active and passive stretches. Active, as you inhale, you're going to push your thigh into the hands and feel your hands resist against it. So your arms are trying to pull your leg in and your leg is trying to push out. So big inhale here. And then exhale, relax everything, see if you can pull the leg a little closer. Three more like this. Inhale, contract and resist. Exhale, soften and let it go. Twice more, inhale. And exhale. Last one, inhale, push. And exhale, release. Let's switch sides, straighten your left leg up. Hold on to the back of that thigh. You can straighten your right leg to the floor if you'd like. So as you inhale, contract as you push your left thigh in towards your palms. Feel the hands resist against. Exhale, soften. Inhale, push and resist. Exhale, relax, draw it in closer. Twice more here, inhale to push. And exhale to release. Last one, inhale, push. And let it go. And let's come up tabletop pose on hands and knees. I'm actually just going to turn around. Keep your blocks somewhere close by to the top of the mat. Cat and cow, inhale, drop your belly, lift the gaze. Exhale, round and contract. A few more here, just getting any kinks out of your spine, out of your shoulders, out of your neck. So really dropping the head down on the exhale. Take your last one here. And we'll find our first downward facing dog. You might need to walk your hands a couple inches past your shoulders before tucking the toes under and lifting your hips up and back. As you inhale, come forward into your plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Twice more like this. Inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, hips go up and back. Last one, inhale forward, lower down to your belly. Point your toes back. Three baby cobras, inhale, chin, palms, chest, lift. Exhale to lower, twice more. Inhale, push into the feet. Exhale, come down. Last one, inhale up, elbows up. Exhale to release, downward facing dog. Now let's reach the right leg up to the sky, bend your right knee, open up your hip. Now listening carefully here, really working our core. Inhale, come forward into three-legged plank pose. Exhale, tap your right knee to your left elbow. Inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, three-legged dog, bend the knee, open the hip. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, right knee to left elbow. Inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, three-legged dog. One more time, inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, right knee to left arm. Inhale, stretch it back. Exhale, three-legged dog. And now let's step the right foot forward in between the palms to the top of the mat. Back heel comes down, warrior two. Arms extending out. So palms facing down, you're squeezing your right knee open. And let's reverse, left hand down, right arm up. Take a great big stretch here. And extended side angle, right forearm over your right thigh, 
Left arm up and over, draw the left shoulder back. Letting the hips sink down nice and low. Looking down to the mat, find your easy twist. Left hand comes down to the floor. Back heel lifts off the mat. Right arm extends up to the sky. Push into that bottom hand to spread your arms further away from one another, keeping the pelvis down nice and low. Big inhale here. And then drop your back knee to the mat and reach your right hand to the back of the mat, maybe holding here or reaching, integrating your quad stretch with your low lunge. So trying to pull that heel in towards the glutes rather than lifting the hips up to meet the heel. Big breath in here. And looking down to the floor, we'll come into our tiger pose, our variation of tiger pose. So right hand comes back down. You're gonna kick your right heel up to the sky. Drop the belly, lift the heart, kind of like cat and cow. Exhale, tap your knee to your nose, round and contract. Twice more, inhale, squeeze and lift. Exhale, draw it in. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Stretch your right leg all the way back, keep it straight and square. So rotate that inner thigh up right thigh down and then left arm maybe extends up bicep along the ear thumb pointing up to the sky try to remove the curve out of your low back take an inhale here left hand comes down to the mat tuck your left toes under three like a dog right leg goes all the way up and back and downward dog right foot down let's take a vinyasa inhale to plank Exhale, chaturanga, cobra or upward dog. And we meet downward facing dog. Second side, left leg reaches up, bend your left knee, open up your hip. Inhale to three-legged plank pose, strong core. Exhale, twist, tap your left knee to your right elbow. Inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, three-legged dog, bend the knee, open the hip, twice more. Inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, twist. Inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, hips go up and back. Last one, inhale forward. Exhale, left knee to right arm. Shoot the left leg back. Hips go up and back, warrior two. Left foot forward, back heel grounds down. Lift on up with the chest, with the arms, reach it out. Squeeze that left knee open. Slow, steady breaths, let's reverse. Right hand down, left arm rises. Into your extended side angle, left forearm down. Right arm reaches up and over, so big diagonal line from the right fingertips all the way to your right foot. Keeping the hips low. And as you look down to the mat, hold your balance here. Right hand is gonna come down to the floor. Back heel lifts up and left arm goes up. So pushing the hands further away from one another. Keep your upper body as it is. Just drop your back knee to the mat. Left hand reaches to the back of the mat, maybe holding and hanging out here or adding on by pulling your heel in towards the glutes. Try to let your pelvis be really heavy here as you open up deep into the hip flexors. And coming into that tiger cat and cow, let go of the back foot, anchor the left palm down and you're gonna kick your left heel up to the sky, drop the belly, lift the gaze. Exhale, knee to nose, round and contract. Twice more, inhale, squeeze and lift. And pull it in. Last one, inhale. And exhale. And now flat back, so core is strong, stretch your left leg back behind you and maybe the right arm extends out in front. Bicep along the ear, thumb pointing up. Remove as much as possible the curve in your low back. Squeeze the glutes to kick into that heel a little more. Bring your right hand down, tuck the right toes under, three like a dog, left leg up, and left leg down, downward facing dog. Let's take our flow. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, downward facing dog. 
From this down dog, let's reach the right leg up to the sky, keep it straight and squared. Inhale, forward, three-legged plank. Exhale, tap your right knee to your right shoulder. Inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, three-legged dog, the leg stays straight. Twice more like this. Inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, right knee to right shoulder. Inhale, shoot it back. Exhale, three-legged dog. Last one, inhale forward. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale back. Exhale, three-legged dog. Let's find our high lunge. Right foot forward between the palms. Keep the back heel lifted off the mat. And come on up once you have your balance here. So bending generously into that front knee. We're gonna cactus the arms, so bending the elbows and like a little cat and cow here. So doing a lot of cat and cow motions in our practice today. As you inhale, you're gonna squeeze the shoulder blades behind you, open the chest. And on the exhale, you're gonna round and contract, bringing your forearms together. Twice more, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, open up. Exhale, bring it in. Come back to neutral, and you're gonna swing your left arm underneath your right, binding once or twice for eagle arms. Find something to focus on that's not moving. We'll step up into our eagle pose, wrapping the left leg over the right one. Sink your hips down low, bending both knees. Everything is facing forward. Push your forearms together. Pull your navel in towards your spine. Reach your tailbone down to the floor. Chair pose, arms reach up, big toes together, heels apart, drop down even lower. From this chair pose, bring your hands to your heart, twist to the right, left elbow over your right thigh. Once you've twisted, look at your knees. Usually the left knee creeps forward, shifted back, so both stay in line. And now looking down to the floor, like a little flamingo, shift your weight onto your right leg, and see if you can pick up the left foot off the mat. Once you have that, can you step back into your high lunge prayer twist? Pushing into the palms. Staying facing over to the side. See if you can float the elbow off of your thigh. Open up your arms. You're welcome to hang out here. Or you can reverse, go deeper. Right hand down, left arm up. Into your easy twist, back where we were before. Left hand down, right arm up. And you're welcome to hang out here or you transition to your side plank pose, rolling to the outer edge of your left foot, stacking the right leg on top and maybe reaching the right fingertips towards the top of your mat. Slow, steady breaths here. Take one more inhale and find your vinyasa, exhale, chaturanga, upward dog, downward dog. Three breaths here in your down dog. All right, second side, super strong flow, reach your left leg up to the sky. Inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, left knee to left arm. Inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, three-legged dog. Two more times. Inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, left knee to left shoulder. Inhale, three-legged plank. Exhale, three-legged dog. Last one, you got this. Inhale, forward. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, reach. Exhale, lift it up. Good job. Let's find our high lunge. Back heel stays up. Arms reach. And once you feel steady and you have your balance here, you can cactus with your arms. So cactus shape, we want to keep our elbows at the same height as our shoulders. Cat and cow, inhale, open, little back bend. Exhale, contract, round it in. Two more like this. Inhale, open up. Exhale, round it in. 
Find a neutral spine. You're gonna wrap your right arm under the left, binding once or twice. I'm just gonna move my microphone here a little bit. And once you have something to focus on, find your eagle pose. Standing on the left leg and wrapping your right thigh over, maybe looping the toes, they don't have to. So try to minimize the curve in your low back here. This is a core strengthening pose. Can you feel your abdominals engage here? Keep your elbows up high. Chair pose, arms up, big toes together, heels apart, sink down lower. Hands at your heart, we twist to the left, right elbow over your left thigh. Look down at your knees, bring them back together so they don't shift. Looking down to the floor, lean your weight on the left and maybe pick up the right toes from off the mat. Little flamingo. Maybe the toes step back, high lunge, prayer twist. Push the elbow into the knee, feel the knee push back against it. Super strong through your legs, engage your core and just lift the upper body up, open up your arms. Stay here or go further, left hand down, right arm up. Easy twist, right hand to the floor, left arm stacks on top. Maybe hang out where you are or go into your side plank pose. Left leg over the right, left arm over the ear, fingertips reaching towards the front of your mat. Push into the feet to lift the pelvis up. And we'll take our vinyasa, inhale plank, exhale chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And just walk your feet towards the top of the mat, finding a ragdoll fold so you can widen your feet a little bit here as you let the upper body relax over your thighs. Slow down your breath, slow down your heart rate. Shaking out to remove any tension from the neck the jaw, the shoulders. Release your fingertips to the floor, push into your heels to roll up, super strong. And bring your feet hip width distance apart. I'm just gonna shift back a little bit here. We're just gonna come into warrior three. So you can lean on your right leg, hands at your heart, really feel your core engage and just point your left toes back. Now, the more your left leg goes up, the more your chest goes up. So there's a bit of like a counterbalance happening. So as you squeeze into the glutes, you can lift the back leg up and lean your chest forward, but at most you're parallel to the floor. So we don't want this kind of action where the head is really low and the leg is higher. We wanna just try parallel. Try to rotate, ooh, rotate that left hip down. Reach the crown of your head forward. Doesn't take too long to feel the muscles in the right leg really start to work here. But you make things easier for yourself by contracting the left glutes. Inhale, come up into tree pose. Place the left foot somewhere along the inside of your right leg. Push the foot to the inner thigh, feel the inner thigh push and resist against it. As you squeeze that left knee open, draw everything into the midline and maybe the arms can extend up. Keeping your gaze steady on something that is not moving, draw your navel in. Hands at the heart, find a little chair pose, bend the knees. With your big toes together, for this chair pose, you're gonna reach your arms back, palms facing down. Lean your weight forward into the balls of the feet and see if you can lift your heels off the ground, keeping your ankles together so they don't splay out to the sides. So working on our standing balancing poses before we shift gears and go to yin which will feel really good. <laughs> Heels come back down to the mat and mountain pose, release. 
Let's find warrior three on the second side. So feet hip width distance apart, shift to the left, point your right toes back. So what happens a lot in warrior three is that as we lower, our right hip kind of pulls back and we almost end up facing the side. Really try to keep everything facing forward or facing down to the mat. And it's less about height and more about length. So how far can you stretch your heel away from the crown of your head? And how much can you pull your lower belly in towards your low back, especially to protect the low back? Squeeze into the glutes to lift the back leg up even more. Just keep it engaged. Without digging your toes into the floor, one more breath. And we'll find tree pose on the second side. Right foot places itself somewhere along the inside of your left leg. Feel your left leg push against the foot as you draw everything into the midline. Maybe the arms open up, growing the branches of your trees. Grow a little taller. Hands at the heart, chair pose. We'll find that same variation again. So our last pose that requires some strength before we shift gears to yin. Lean forward into the balls of the feet, reach your arms back and see if you can pick up the heels from the ground. Keeping the belly off of your thighs, shoulders moving away from the floor. So you're almost squeezing your shoulders behind you. And heels come down, mountain pose. And you can go ahead and just bend your knees. Before we, most of our yin yoga poses will pretty much all be done on, lying down on our backs, except this first one. We'll take a little forward fold, butterfly fold here. Soles of the feet come together to touch. And you can melt the upper body over your legs. And this is where you might want to have a block somewhere close by because then you don't really have to work too much if you can prop yourself up with some blocks. Just whatever feels good here. It's completely optional. And if you've done yin yoga with me in the past, you know that I like to uh, not talk <laughs> during yin yoga, which most people really appreciate. So for the next few minutes, just focus on your breath, on slowing down your heart rate and on truly relaxing the muscles in your body. So no effort needed. Remember, we're not trying to go to the extreme edge of our flexibility. This is not the case. This is not what's going to get you results either. It's a misconception to think that the more you push for flexibility, the more flexible you'll become. Really, you wanna hold back a little bit. Less is definitely more and just breathe into it.
Start to push your hands into the floor and let this be what lifts you all the way back up nice and slow. You might want to bring your knees back in, maybe do a little windshield wiper motion with the legs here, letting the knees drop side to side, just to release the low back, not rushing through the movements. We're really slowing things down here, trying to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest part of our nervous system. And we'll come into supported fish. So using your blocks, one goes between the shoulder blades, the other goes underneath the back of the head. And you're welcome to do a butterfly shape again with your legs, if you like. Soles of the feet together, knees apart, if you'd like to go and do that again. Or you can just straighten your legs out, whatever feels good here. Drop your shoulders down and away from your ears, opening through the heart. Let go of any effort, any straining, any pushing, and just relax. Release from this pose to lay flat on our backs. So you can tuck your chin to your chest and move the first block off to the side. Keep one of them somewhere close by in case you need it. And lower all the way down on your back. It might feel good just to take a moment here, letting your spine be completely leveled. 
You can stretch your arms up overhead, take a great big stretch. And then bending into the knees, feet flat to the mat, we'll take reclined swan pose. Cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee, flexing the foot, and you can pull the knee in towards the belly. I'm just moving my microphone here. And draw your left thigh in towards you using only a little bit of arm strength. The rest of your body softens. Release your left foot back down to the mat. You're going to cross your right thigh over the left one. Reach your arms out to the side and you can move your hips a little bit over to the right before letting both knees drop down over to the left. So taking a laying spinal twist here. And if the knees are hovering off the floor and it's a little too intense for you, you can use your block and place it underneath the legs or even in between the thighs as well.
Engage your belly a little bit. Lift the knees back up to center, uncrossing your legs. We'll repeat that little sequence on the other side so you can cross your left ankle over the right thigh. Recline swan first, pushing the left knee away from you. And you can reach with your hands, pulling your right thigh in towards your belly. Let your right foot come back down to the mat. Cross your left thigh over the right one. Shift your hips a little over to the left. Open up the arms. Find your twist as your knees release down over to the right side of your mat. Maybe using a block if this feels a little too intense. Otherwise, just softening into the pose.
let's lift the knees back up uncross your legs make our way to Shavasana, our final resting pose. Take up space, turn your palms to face up. And do any little movements or adjustments that you need here to get really comfortable so that there's no need for you to work or to use any kind of effort. And you can instead just release and relax into it. Begin to deepen your breath. Reawaken by moving fingers and toes or turning your head side to side. You can stretch out, reaching long through your arms, out through your toes. You can turn to one side. We'll come up to take a seat. Sitting up nice and tall and maybe closing your eyes once you're there, hands can join together at the front of your heart. Just noticing the effects on your, of your practice, on your mind, on your body, on your breath. And we'll close this class with a chant of Om one time. Inhale to chant, big breath in. Namaste. 
Thank you so much, yogis, for doing this Vinti Yin yoga practice with me. I would love to know how this went for you. If you enjoyed it, do let me know. Leave me a comment down below and please subscribe to my channel. I put out new classes every week. And for those of you who don't know, I also have a new mobile app. You can find it in the app store or also just clicking the link in the description box. There's a free seven day trial and in the app, you'll find all of my YouTube classes, but you're also going to find a bunch of exclusive content um, longer content, guest teachers, as well as a calendar, a journal, just a bunch of really cool stuff. All right, that's it for now. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and I'll practice again with you soon.